Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another resin project. So today I'm going to be showing you how to take these cute little hummingbird molds and make adorable resin hummingbirds. So I really, really wanted to make a few iridescent like hummingbirds for this tree. Let's see if I can find one. I bought these. Oh goodness gracious. I'm not gonna get that off. I have another one over here. Okay. That took way too long. I bought these iridescent 3D hummingbirds last year. I bought two of them um, from Dillard, so they weren't exactly cost effective. <laughs> But I love them and I love how they look on the tree and so I wanted to find a cost-effective way to make a bunch of them for this tree and of course the answer is always resin especially for something like this the the kit comes with six molds so you can make quite a few at one time I think I made 50 milliliters of resin to pour into these with some iridescent flakes it worked perfectly so I did experiment with the amount of iridescent flakes that I poured in each mold. I will show you the results of that. But this is a pretty quick and easy project. There is a few tips and tricks that I'll show you along the way to make sure that the resin goes all the way into the little beak and around that ring so that you have somewhere to put your ornament hook. But overall, this is definitely a beginner level project that you can make. It's super cute for your tree. And I just, I really like how they turned out. So let's jump right into the project and then I will show you on the tree afterwards. All right, y'all. So we are going to get started. As you can see, I have quite a few projects out here. So when I pour resin, I like to be able to mix up quite a bit of resin, maybe in a couple colors. Today I'm doing iridescent and rose gold, and then pour a few projects at a time. That way I don't have to just do, you know, a couple, couple little bits of resin. So. First, we're just gonna go ahead and mix resin, and then we will jump into each project individually. So, first things first, since I'm doing two different colors, I'm going to go ahead and mix, I think, I'm thinking 300 milliliters in my big cup here. So I'm gonna do 150 of A, 150 of B, and mix those thoroughly together. Once I get everything mixed up and ready to go, we'll, we'll switch. So make sure once you're actually working with the resin here that you have your gloves on and that you have your respirator on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my respirator on and I'll, I'll try to put some instructions up here on the screen since you won't be able to hear me anymore.
ready to demold our hummingbirds. So you saw in the video, I did decide at the last minute to do a almost a full layer of iridescent flakes across the backs of these three. These little guys, you can see, oh, that's funny. Um, the iridescent flakes are definitely suspended, but because of all these little tiny areas, they didn't really go corner to corner like I would want. So I thought maybe a thin layer across the back would help with that. But this thin layer, unless I cut it, isn't going to go down into the beak. So I wasn't sure which, which version I would like better. So I just decided let's do three and three and see. So let's start with one of the normal ones. I just poured it. Oh, he did go down in that beak. Oh, it's pretty. Okay, so even though it didn't go as much up in the face, you can definitely still see it all the way through. I definitely still like it. And you can see all these little fine lines. So I could put a paint on here to define those if I wanted to. There we go, get it to focus. Let's do one of these. Let's see if this gives us more dimension or not. Well, it gives us more sparkle, but it definitely loses some of those lines. And I knew when I did this, I would have to go back in probably with my Dremel and clean up all this excess. So once we clean this up, we'll have a better idea. But so far, just off initial reactions, I think I like this one better. I don't know if you noticed, but when I was making these guys, I did use this little twist tie, which I had because I had just unboxed my new heat gun. I wanted a new shiny one. It's been a few years since I got my last one. I still love this model, so I got the same exact model, but my other one was just covered in resin and they're only 30 bucks. Anyways, a toothpick would work better, but I didn't think to get one and my resin was curing. So I used this and really kind of forced the resin down into all these little areas where if you don't get them down in here, they just, just won't form. So this one worked really well. This one you can see, I didn't get the beak quite all the way down to the end see the difference the beak's not as long it's just not as long so that still works like I can still put this on my tree but keep that in mind you want something little preferably a toothpick because they're more rigid you could really manipulate them better to really force that resin down into those little tiny areas okay that one worked this one's better then that one, I still need to obviously clean up the edges, but we'll see. That's a nice beak. That's a nice beak. So honestly, I will probably just take a sharp pair of little scissors and cut this as close as I can. The parts where that will work, that's perfect. But some of these little places that are curved, scissors won't really get in there. So I'll use the little barrel of my Dremel to sand those out. Oh, this one needs it a little too. So this one I overfilled a little much. And you can see that it's coming off the edges on that back layer. So we'll Dremel him down as well. But overall, I think these turn out really pretty. Do you like this one or this one better? I'm gonna dremel these off and then we'll see again. But so far I think I like these. If I was gonna make more, I think I would just do them like this. No dremeling, easier, and I think they turn out just as pretty. I think with the twinkle lights of the tree, 
those iridescent flakes will still show up. All right, y'all, I hope you liked this project as much as I liked making it, but here are our hummingbirds. So as you can see, this is the one with all of the iridescent flakes, and this is the one with just the flakes in the, in the batter, in the resin. And when I was making them, I really, I mean, I told you in the video, I thought I liked the one with fewer flakes more, but because they are clear resin on the tree, the iridescent flakes with the lights, y'all, the ones with all the flakes. I don't know if y'all can see that, but they are so pretty. So when all is said and done, I think my end vote is for all the resin flakes on the back. So I guess make some yourself and see what you like, but that is what I like. I also experimented with whether or not I wanted to add the white paint to the um, hummingbird lines for where the wings and the mouth and the tail is. I wasn't sure that I really needed them because the hummingbirds are so pretty on their own. But that little bit of definition, especially with the light shining through the back, really helps on the tree so that you can see these because they do disappear into the tree a little bit without that little extra bit of help. So I hope you liked this project. I will show you a bit of a close up because this tree, as beautiful as it is, it does not photograph nearly as well as the other tree. So I will show you in a video real quick um, how they look on the tree. I really like how they turned out. I think I ended up making like 15 of them. <laughs> I wanted to make a full like six times three, but I didn't have quite enough resin for that last, last little bit. So I just made three in the last one. But overall, I think it was a great success. I really like how they turn out. One more PSA, if you've ever seen me make resin ornaments before, I made all of these resin snowflakes last year in different sizes. I love them on the tree. This is just turning into my resin tree. Um, I'll leave that link below. But if you watched that video, you know that resin all the time, even on a Christmas tree, is poisonous. And just because it's pretty and it's Christmas time does not mean it's not poisonous. So when I put these on the tree, I make sure that I wrap, I use pliers actually, I wrap the, the wire, the ornament hooks, I get the extra long ones. I wrap them around the top of the actual hummingbird two or three times. And then I wrap them around each branch. Oh goodness, two or three times. So that way if they fall, like my little cricket basswood truck just fell off the wall. If they fall, or if like me, you have dogs or kids or even cats like to bat at ornaments. If anything, barring an earthquake even, shakes your resin loose from this tree, no pets or children or husbands, I don't control what they put in their mouths, can eat them and get sick, so. There's my little PSA. Let's go ahead and give you a close up. This one here is my favorite of the lesser iridescent flake pieces, and you can still see the full effect there, but here's one with all the flakes. I mean, so pretty. All right, y'all, bye.